Happy start to a new work week. This is it, I swear, there ain't nothing better, we're up, and we're out, in the perfect weather. Today was my first day going in and doing everything totally by myself at jail. <laughs> So today is June 20th, so it's the day that we observe Juneteenth since Juneteenth was on a Sunday and so it was like a state holiday, federal holiday, and everyone else had off work except for me. I know sometimes work videos like this, like work week in the lives, bring in new people, so if you do happen to be new here, hello, my name is Anna. I just got my MSW really, really recently. If you're curious about social work at all, I've documented a whole lot of my journey thus far and will continue to document as I go into this new part of it, but the new part of it is that I recently started a job as a mental health clinician, so still a social worker, in in a youth detention center, so juvie, jail for adolescents, teenage boys, and I'm settling in. Today being Monday is the beginning of my, I guess it's like my fourth week, but maybe like three and a half week because I started on a Wednesday. So we're getting close to a month, we're not quite there yet, of me having worked here. And like I said, today I went in all by myself, all of the responsibilities were entirely on me, and honestly it was okay. So just with the position that I have like in the facility, I basically work whenever other people don't want to. I split it with some people, like there's full-time people and there's part-time people and I'm one of the part-time people which still means 29 hours a week and I also have a second job that we'll get into honestly probably not even this week because I'm not working it this week but with the part-time I cover weekends and holidays and I haven't started weekends yet because they wanted to give me time to acclimate to the new facility before starting weekends but I did cover a holiday today so honestly all that meant is I went in and I could kind of go in whenever I wanted to but I still went in at 8 and I stayed until about 2 but I did my rounds at like 8 45 this morning so all of the kids were basically still asleep because they we don't have school today so they were sleeping in so it's just like really chill no action did my rounds spoke to the kids that I needed to got back to the office did the paperwork I needed to and then didn't know what to do with myself and I was just talking to Zach about this but I feel like I'm a little bit traumatized from like service jobs customer service food service jobs and that I feel like when I'm like on the clock when I'm at work I have to be working and what's crazy is with this job really a big part of it is just like my presence in the facility in case something were to happen like if there are any crises or anything that I get called for and other than that there's like the tasks that I need to do like checking on the kids I need to check on or like doing an assessment if it were to be needed today today it wasn't but then after I get that done I can kind of just chill and so I did do that a little bit I also found some work for myself to do in that there's a whole filing mess that needs help and I thought that I could be that help and I spent probably two hours on it and barely even scratched the surface so I was a little bit less of that help than I was hoping to be but then after that I just like watched YouTube videos and like read a book and I got paid for that that was my job today the rest of the week will be busy especially because I didn't like have it on the calendar to see any kids or have any sessions today because it was a holiday it was just the holiday coverage but I feel like it was monumental it was a new part of life because as an intern because I whenever I intern at a different facility I can never be in the building by myself obviously because I was not an employee I was just the intern and today I held down the fort granted it was a very slow day so it was not a hard fort to hold down one kid did call for mental health so they can like do that they have little intercoms in their room and they can ask to speak to mental health and so obviously we go and those are a variety of crises from very minuscule to greater and this one was like just a very minuscule one he thought that a different mental health provider was in the building and he really just wanted to speak to that guy but he was not in the building so I just let him know that he could talk to him tomorrow crises averted but I left at about two because really on holidays we don't need to be there for that long but because honestly originally everyone kind of forgot that we didn't work on June 20th because June 20th isn't Juneteenth it's just observed then and so I had scheduled myself for the full day to get my 29 hours this week and then have Thursday being my short day but I just was not gonna stay till four today whenever like I was the only one there it was lonely I was already out of things to do so I left at two and then I'll just stay two hours later on Thursday so it'll be until about three got home though chilled ate a snack, went and worked out. I worked out my arms, got a big old pump, and I'm excited to start this week. It's on you to decide if something changes. You say bye, 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 bye. When you're stuck in chains, well, nothing changes. I've been 
dueling a little sweat bee that made its way into my car this entire car ride and I feel like it's gonna pop back up as I'm talking but this morning Zach and I wanted to go to a new coffee location that's opened up East Pole Coffee they have one somewhere in Atlanta I forget the name of the area somewhere in Atlanta though and they just opened one in Ponce Highlands that looks really cute and wanted to go but it turns out they're soft opening which means they open at eight not seven seven will be their normal hours and so thankfully I realized that before we actually get up and went and so we went to Perk instead which is in Virginia Highlands and it was good I got a it was called a good times latte it's one of the lattes that it had some lavender it had something else in it it was good like they're kind of weird I feel like I've been branching out with my coffee lately I feel like coffee shops I've been going to have been having just like weird stuff but I mean it was good I feel like people who are really into coffee are gonna be like Anna that's not weird that's fancy it was kind of weird but it tasted good which is what matters and then I just dropped Zach off at work today is actually my day off like I feel like on days off you're supposed to like earn it like you're supposed to like work a lot and then you're like ah oh, day off and really like I had a weekend I went in for six hours yesterday now I have a day off so what do I do with myself I don't know we'll find out we'll definitely find out there are things on my long to-do list that I have not been prioritizing that maybe should be a today thing but it's still the a.m. and so I just don't think I'm gonna worry about them in the a.m. those can be more p.m. activities if we get there such as I've had a headlight that's been out for like two months which means I look like a doofus driving down the road whenever it's dark enough out to have headlights on because it really is just the one guiding my way I need to get a new pillow because my old pillow just isn't cutting it anymore it's quite a few years old and it just it, I might as well just lay my head on the mattress it just doesn't give me much those are the out of house to do's the in-house to do's I have a book that I need to finish well not, I don't need to finish it today but I'd like to make some headway on it today because I go to a book club on Sunday and I have not finished the book yet I actually just started it like two days ago but we're reading I'll give you the sun which so far is just like a cute like YA book I'll say more about it as I read it more and have more to say about it but I need to make some headway on that and then also I need to find stamps because I have stamps somewhere in this apartment and I feel like I've even seen them recently but I don't remember where I've seen them recently and I have Father's Day cards that I want to send um even though Father's Day at this point was now two days ago but I still want to send them because I got them I just need to find my stamp that's the general layout of the day I'm assuming that not everything I just mentioned will get done at all I really don't want to go somewhere to get my headlight fixed just because I hate it but I do want my headlight to be fixed like, I'm not planning on driving anywhere in the dark anytime soon so that's why it feels not urgent but it is embarrassing like I do look like a little doofus just driving down with one headlight on one headlight dark as pitch anyways happy day off in the middle of this work week crazy You would not believe how many <laughs> different clips I filmed of me around the house doing exactly this to wait for this exact moment. These are not my stamps. These are not the ones that I have been looking for, but they are stamps. So it counts and it works. Little American flags. My stamps are vegetables, but this, this works. I can send out my Father's Day cards two days late. <laughs> just got back from my workout. I did like barely anything. Like it was full body technically, but barely anything because I'm so sore that just like moving feels like hard workout. And so I basically did that. And then I walked on the treadmill for, I think it was like 12 minutes, but I was very distracted, which is why I wanted to come on and talk about it because I'm about to make a TikTok apology video and I'm smiling because I'm a little bit uncomfortable. But as you guys know, I like to show my social work journey and I like to talk about what I do and talk about social work as a whole. And lots of times I get very like, complimentary comments about that of people learning from educational content I put out or people learning from experiential content I put out and that is what I value and that is what I try to do and I like to think sometimes that I'm good at it which is why I keep doing it and so I appreciate all of the like compliments and everything that I've ever gotten that being said I obviously am like a very fresh MSW for one for two obviously just like am not perfect and I feel like wording this it's hard for me not to feel like I'm coming across as like guys I make mistakes too but basically on TikTok Talk, I made a video that I just made like quick and thought it was like a cute story about some guys who are part of the yoga group that they do at my facility and basically what it was was like I was talking with them about yoga and mentioned how my favorite part of a yoga class is when you just take like a little nap at the end and one of the guys was like you mean the shavasana and I was like yeah sorry I mean the shavasana that was like the story that I was trying to tell but in doing so I tried
tried to highlight like kind of the irony, the contradiction of the guys who love yoga and like are correcting me on the yoga terms with them being like big, muscly, strong guys. In doing so, I mentioned, well actually, let's just have me speak for myself every week is for stress relieving and mindfulness and everything. I'm still working on building a relationship, getting to know the guys at my new facility. And what's important to note is that at the facility, these boys come in all shapes and sizes, all different ages, backgrounds, etc. But this particular instance, I was standing with three 16 year old boys who were ones that I wouldn't necessarily want to run into in the community. Just picture big, muscly, tatted, feel really grown. And I was asking them. So that was the part there, that whenever I said that I wouldn't really want to run into them in the community, that some people have pointed out as perpetuating a stigma around the clients that I work with and how as a social worker, it obviously is my job to choose my words carefully in order to not perpetuate stigma or increase stereotypes in people. And that by posting on TikTok, I kind of need to recognize that people outside of my like, close context will see it. And if that's the only video they see of mine, then I don't know, does that phrase stuck out to a lot of people? And I was thinking about it basically all of my workout and I am gonna make a video on TikTok. I think my plan essentially is just like to thank the commenter for pointing it out and that I'll be more careful with my words while recognizing that people who watch my TikToks won't always know the context that like I know in my head. Like I know what I meant but if my words don't reflect what I meant then like it only holds that much value. You know what I mean? And so I think like here on YouTube you know that with my clients I very much hold their intrinsic value. Like I respect them, recognize their dignity, I fight for them, I encourage them, I empower them. Like I love the boys that I work with and so I think that's why to me saying a phrase like that I didn't feel like it was putting them down because like I know where I come from and I know how I feel about my work and the clients that I work with but for people who don't know that who are not inside my head it kind of can come across as like me saying my clients are violent or like worth something less or something like that so I thought about not even mentioning it on YouTube but then I was like nah this is a part of my week and I really have spent like the past hour and a half or so thinking about it and then like five minutes ago I got a comment that was like about me not addressing it yet and said oh gosh sorry <laughs> give me time but I have spent time reflecting and since it was part of the week, I wanted to bring it into the YouTube journey too. But like I said, I hope that that can be like a learning moment for all of us and that, I don't know, like the phrase that I didn't feel like was harmful is coming across that way to other people. And just because I didn't mean it as harmful doesn't mean that it's not harmful. I also say that to say, if I ever say anything on here that comes across in a way that I don't want it to come across, whether or not I realize it, I hope that you feel comfortable enough to call me out too, because like that's what this is all about. Obviously my first reaction was like a little bit defensive of like well I didn't mean it like that but like I said it doesn't really matter what I mean by it it matters more like what I say and how it is taken especially in such a like touchy subject area and that I don't want anyone to think poorly about my clients so why would I say something that would maybe insinuate that someone should think poorly about that's my journey this was five minutes and 50 seconds long my TikTok apology could not be that long if I get canceled on TikTok will you guys still like me <laughs> I'm just kidding I mean, it was two people commented I'm gonna make the video though. Okay. Since we, that, uh, my PJ shorts right there and my sock. Gosh. Since we talked about it, I'll play my apology video for you and then I'm gonna be off TikTok for the rest of today. So if you see me trying to sneak a little TikTok, get me off of it. Thank you. I really appreciate you making this comment because you are right that as social workers, it is our job to use and choose language that builds communities up and to call it language that doesn't. And honestly, as I was making that TikTok, as I was filming it and Rewatching it and choosing to post it, that phrase just did not stick out to me. But on TikTok, as we all know, your videos can get pushed to so many more people than you think they might. And so it is always my job to be careful with my language and to make sure that my words reflect the intrinsic value that my clients hold, the dignity that they have, and the respect that I have for them. And so you are right, that little phrase did not do that. And I do apologize for that. And I'm going to pin this comment on that video so that anyone who watches that video can do so with this discussion in mind. And like I said, I really appreciate it. There was my apology. I feel like it was all right. I feel like maybe it expressed what I was trying to express. And now I'm gonna eat some ice cream because I have like 25 minutes before going to pick up Zach. I feel like today went a little bit differently than I expected, but it just, like I'm glad that if I say something that comes across poorly like that, that people can call it out. But also it just like put me kind of in my head of like, you know, like I don't want to say this and make it sound like I'm like trying to get comments that are, I'm, mm, I need to stop getting disclaimers. I don't want it to sound like I'm fishing for compliments though, but it got me in my head of like, am I worth having a platform? Like, 
like do I deserve having any kind of platform granted like it's small but you know I I love this little community but like do I deserve having a platform if I'm like so new at this like who am I essentially to like speak on social work things because I'm so new at this but then obviously I combat that with like the people that I like to watch are ones who don't have it figured out and so I need you to know that I do not have it figured out and I am going to like I said go eat some ice cream I got a non-dairy Ben and Jerry's I think it's cookie dough and it's really good and I feel like it'll bring some joy into my day and then also I'll read some more of my book because I really haven't read as much today as I was hoping to. For a second I thought I had my stress chest going. I don't think I do. I think I did a little bit when I was making that video but I'm not even that stressed about it. I just wanted to make sure it was addressed well. the heat wave talk was done after last week's vlog. I just wish you were right, but there's another hot one out there. I am on my way to pick up Zach. I actually got off early today. I got off at three Thursday now, so I stayed a full day yesterday, but today I got off at three, but Zach wasn't quite ready to be picked up yet, and so I went and got some things at Kroger. Got a little watermelon, got some juices. I was looking for those like one piece cake things that they always have, you know, whenever like a cake's like going bad or something, and so they cut up the big one and make the small pieces just like two dollars I love when they do that but they did not have any at this Kroger it's not my regular Kroger it's a different one it's a smaller one to be honest oh and I got some peanut M&Ms too but now I'm gonna go drive over to Zach's building I don't know if he'll be done yet by the time I get there but I'll just sit there I suppose if he's not yet I don't know if I've mentioned this but I keep dropping him off and picking him up because his parking pass costs eight dollars a day and like kind of on my way like relatively on my way and so it seems worth it for eight dollars a day but today was a busy day at jail, can't wait to tell you about it. But first, let's go see if I can pick up Zachary. I'm about to go work out. That's why the get up is here, but figure we'd do a little Eminem and chat about the day. Obviously, as you can assume, Zach did end up being ready to go finally. So I went and picked him up and just eating a little snacks and such. But I guess we'll start with yesterday. So yesterday was a really, <laughs> It wasn't even that busy. That's what I feel like because I'm used to like food service job, daycare job, all of that. The workflow of just like a regular job is just funky to me because it wasn't that it was a busy day, but there was like three big things that I had to do. So I wasn't like running around out of breath, stressed out, but it was just like kind of more mentally draining than physically draining in that I did two assessments that are like a PTSD diagnostic assessment essentially that we do. And so it asked the kids, forgot I was doing my own name. Sorry, that was like aggressively put in my mouth. <laughs> and so we asked the kids like a series of questions about various different things of like if they've happened to them in their lifetime And then after that like if they've said yes to any of the things then we kind of talk about PTSD symptoms that are possible for some people And I always frame it in that way of like whenever very scary or bad things happen to people like some that you've mentioned so far Sometimes people will react in this way or find themselves affected in this way And then we kind of ask like does it affect you in this way? And if so like how often is it like one day a week most days a week two to three days all that go through like a whole big It's like a page and a half of symptoms and then just like with PTSD we ask like have these symptoms affected you for the past month and that's either yes or no and then kind of to find the like clinical distress part of it there's a series of questions too that's like have you found that since this event happened it has been harder to and it'll be stuff like make or keep friends do your schoolwork do your chores sleep at night that kind of thing 
And then there's just like one more page at the end that kind of talks about like of the things that you said yes have happened to you that like are very scary or bad things like what affects you most like what pops up in your head most what do you feel that like the symptoms you mentioned happening stem from the most and we'll kind of try to isolate like usually try to get it down to one sometimes it just like will be one or two events that like have really affected them and then kind of talk through just a little bit just like kind of surface level as surface level as trauma can be just like surface level of how that event has affected their life now and it's a ptsd diagnostic scale and so like in doing that then like our psychologist can review it and kind of see if a PTSD diagnosis would be beneficial but then also just as a clinician doing it with clients I always tell them too that this is kind of a good way that in the beginning we can kind of just like lay everything out on the floor because sometimes in counseling sessions or in therapy it can be hard to know like should I bring this thing up like would she care about this thing is this thing relevant and by just like asking these questions it can kind of just like put everything out there and so it kind of is in like so whatever you want to focus on in the future like it's all been covered at least once you know like it's easier to bring it up next time because it's already been covered and then also in doing that you can do like psychoeducation about PTSD you know because some people for example like a lot of the boys in the facility are super hyper vigilant like they're kind of always on a 10 like always ready to go you know like not, maybe not physically like looking over the shoulder but like staying ready so they don't have to get ready if something were to happen because a lot of them have just like been in environments whether it's home school neighborhood anything even like in jail itself where like anything could pop off at any time and so we can kind of like connect those types of feelings and those types of reaction to things that have happened in the past and be like that is normal like people when these types of things happen to people they do feel this way or like people can react this way and like it's not just a you thing like you're not going crazy because you feel affected by it or like the fact that you have bad dreams every night doesn't mean that you are crazy or that there's something wrong with you it just is you know an effect of like what you've been through so that was a big long thing and <laughs> just imagine me actually doing those assessments and then I did two of them yesterday so that's what I mean by draining it's just that it was draining and then I didn't vlog just because I didn't like feel the best once I got off work just like physically was tired like I wasn't like ill but I was just very bleh you know and so just took the night off but obviously here we are back again Thursday today it was another busy day because I actually didn't see any of my kids like officially but we had our weekly meeting which is when just people from all different like disciplines what departments come in for our treatment team meeting and we just talk about either like kids who are new or like whose treatment plan reviews are coming up just to make sure that there is like cohesive teamwork in treatment of the kids because it takes a village and so we just make sure that the village is all on the same page and so I presented a kid in our meeting today and then after our meeting we had a therapeutic restraint drill therapeutic restraint isn't really something that we need to use we haven't ever while I've been there but we do a drill just like in case it were to ever need to be used so everyone will know like the proper protocol and who has to authorize it and like the various checks that need to be done and like medical and all of that kind of stuff so it's just a drill like it wasn't that big of a deal I'm trying to think if I did anything else I then did a note for the kids that I presented in treatment team just to document that I presented them and tomorrow I actually didn't know this tomorrow I'll be the only mental health person there so it's gonna kind of be like Monday which if you remember Monday I went on the holiday and I got so lonely and bored the difference will be that it's actually not a holiday so they're like in the facility there will be more people like it won't just be no man's land but I found a way that I can read books I've checked out virtually from the library like digitally on my computer there so I may read I may watch some YouTube while I'm there because I do have on the calendar to see one kid and then I guess I can like finalize my July schedule because July is gonna be crazy let me tell you <laughs> finalize my July schedule that I'll be working but then also like plan when I want to see my kids It'll be a lot of like more prep and then I have one kid I need to see oh and actually as I was leaving today there was a police car pulling in and a kid was getting out so there might actually be a new intake that I may have to do an assessment on tomorrow but we'll see that's all tomorrow thing tonight I'm gonna go to the gym I have really been struggling because I think it was it was either Monday or Tuesday I did a lot of biceps at the gym and my biceps are so sore now that I can't extend my arm past right here which is the weirdest feeling and it happened to me too whenever remember when I did like CrossFit and then that other workout one week in like April it happened to me then too but this time what is so no biceps when I go today. I honestly might just do the treadmill because I don't even think I can hold weights if I can't straighten my arms. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs>
Friday morning and I'm about to head in. Remember, I'm the only one from mental health that's gonna be there today, which means I'm a full grown up adult and I feel like it'll either go where I have a lot to do and am like healthily busy all day or I'll run out of things to do and watch some YouTube videos, read a book online. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Today is a little bit of an exciting day because the boys have like Uber Eats opportunity, meaning if they haven't gotten into any kind of incident that would disqualify them and if they've saved up enough of their like positive behavior buck, then they have the opportunity for Uber Eats to be delivered. And so some of them are planning for that and have like their restaurants picked out and everything. So it's just cool to see whenever like good behavior really pays off in ways that they can feel because you know positive reinforcement and so I imagine today will be a good day I guess we'll see I might come out at the end of the day looking like I've been through war or something but fingers crossed that that's not it I don't know if I've addressed this but this is Jason's telescope that's in the background here it's been in the background I think this whole video and <laughs> And without context, it seems a little bit funny, but are you ready for some real talk? I've been in a mood since I got home from work today, which is why we are just now chatting. It's like 8.30 and I've also just been sitting on that couch right there editing this video, to be honest. So if you've loved the edit so far, you're welcome, you're welcome. But real talk, I, it's not even I was in a bad mood when I got off work today. I just feel like in the least dramatic sense of the word, my heart felt broken when I left work today. And honestly, lots of times I don't give specifics of situations for probably obvious reasons, you know, just like confidence nature but I feel like this one is fine to give I mentioned how today was like the uber eats day which has been a big thing that like they look forward to so much like kids will be on their best behavior all month for this uber eat day and it's once a month and they save up the bucks that they get for their positive behavior and if they like earn the opportunity to have uber eats delivered to them and like we say uber eats really can just be like food delivered to them like their families just deliver food their families have like notice and they know that either like they can come and deliver the food or they can get Uber Eats to deliver the food or any kind of delivery thing to order the food. And the kids like look forward to this so, so much. And one kid today, his name was on the list and he had been working all month, you know, like had good behavior and saving up his buck, excited and feeling the energy of the rest of the kids and his family didn't send him anything. And it's not a means thing, they had the means to. I don't know. I don't know if they forgot or if they didn't feel like it was that big of a deal or anything, but like then he knew that everyone else had their families deliver them food and they all sat out in the cafeteria and got to eat and there was like little five foot children. <laughs> <laughs> eating 25 piece wings like it really is such a fun day and they just kept this guy like in his room and this guy didn't get to participate because his food didn't get there and i guess there's not like an emergency stash of like food to give him like had i known i would have gotten food delivered for him absolutely but like nobody knew because his family said they were going to send it and then they didn't and then like he didn't get to participate because like it is sad and then just like being in your room with the other people who like didn't earn it and didn't work towards it but also it would also be sad to sit out there and like know that your family forgot about you. I I don't even know if I'm like explaining it well enough and I feel like I'm trying to explain it to not be as sad because like it's situations like this where my heart like literally felt like it just like crumbled into pieces with him. And I know that his heart probably felt that way too. He was kind of taking it out more in an angry way, but that just like is the population that I work with most of the time, you know, like the amount of angry teenage boys <laughs> I deal with in a day is a lot. But I also feel like whenever I see the kids that I work with, I very much see them like as kids because it is so obvious oftentimes that they're just like putting on tough masks and like I could tell <laughs> God. I could tell how much it hurt him that like his family didn't come through for him and that hurts me because like that's not something that like people can fix <sighs> Cause even had I like I known and been able to like get him his meal in time or something like that's still not the people you love showing up for you in the way that like you just hope they will and like if someone grows up as a kid and just like continually doesn't get shown up for and doesn't get shown up for then like that just becomes the expectation of like well why would someone like go out of their way so that's why my day ended up a little bad it's just like I literally felt like my heart shattered into a million bajillion pieces and it also kind of brought up the other part of like I always talk about what I do do in my setting in juvie, but there's also just like a lot of things that I can't do and that's like outside of my realm and outside of my competency and outside of my lane, which is always tough because like I try my best to advocate for kids and like get them what they need, even just from like small things. Like if a kid is wanting lotion or something, you know, like advocate to get them lotion or if like the bigger things, but also like I'm mental health, I'm not security, I'm not their case manager, I'm not head of anything. You know what I mean? Like I think that's the 
constant struggle of social work is always wanting to do more and reaching lots of like no's, but then also like it not being within my bounds, you know? What a, what a bummy way to end a good week. It was a good week. And it wasn't even like I left like pissed off or mad or like frustrated at the system or anything. I just felt like my heart was broken and it still is broken. But I guess that shows, the perk of it shows that I'm starting to really love and care for these kids at my new facility. The ones that I remember whenever I used to say like I'd walk on the unit and be like, who are you people? I'm starting to know those people. And I do plan, I want to emphasize this too. I do plan like next week trying to find some way to fix it for that kid. But like nothing I can do can truly fix that. But you know, like find some way to bring like some joy into his day one of his days somehow because like, that sucks that's bummy and even if you wouldn't say it out loud i know his heart was broken and my heart was broken too I have a really exciting weekend coming up though starting tomorrow so i am excited and i'm trying to push work back into the weekdays so that i can have a good weekend tomorrow but i'm gonna do a little weekend vlog for that weekend because this is a little sneak peek not only is it a fun weekend coming up it's also the last weekend i have off indefinitely <laughs> I will it'll kind of be like grad school times whenever I have like a weird weekend in the middle of the week That's my weekend and nobody else's weekend, but even But even more so coming up than it was whenever I was in grad school at the internship So it's not that I'm working seven days a week. Don't worry, but Saturday and Sunday I'll be working you can catch me working hard-working lady and getting paid for it I appreciate you putting up with my rambles and my like settling into a new vlogging routine. I do plan on working in like more sit down videos and like actual like topic concept videos again. I honestly just haven't felt like the inspiration to film them. So it's been vlog after vlog after vlog, which personally I like, but I also know that people like, you know, just like to be mixed up a little bit. And if there's anything I'm ever like not showing that you'd like to see, let me know. I feel like these videos very much are whatever my brain is stuck on, whatever my brain is thinking about is what gets put into this video. <laughs> so I'm glad that it's received by you people. I love you, I appreciate you. If there's ever any way that I can help you out, answer any questions, give you any encouragement, give you any advice, well, let me know. I can't promise it'll be good, but I would love <laughs> to connect more with you. And I'll see you next time.